What are the main differences between Google Workspace and Microsoft 365? Now, if you'd asked me this question five years ago, 10 years ago, I would have given you a very different answer. I've been working with Google Workspace for over 15 years now, and I've seen the platform and ecosystem develop quite significantly in that time. Now, many, many years ago, when Google started as just basically a business email address plugged into Gmail, once upon a time, they didn't have Google Docs, they didn't have Google Drive, they had Gmail and a calendar, and that was about it. And the cool thing was you could use Gmail with your own email address, your own domain name, but that was about all you could do. Now, Google then bought an online document company and made it Google Docs and eventually launched Google Spreadsheets. And then one day, once upon a time, came Google Slides, which is their PowerPoint ripoff effectively. And then Dropbox was released and everyone started storing their information on the cloud and Google realized, huh, that's a good idea. We should copy that. And so Google released Google Drive for desktop, which let you synchronize your files and your folders down to your desktop machine. And then Google Drive on the web let you start uploading files that weren't Google Docs. They were, you know, PDFs and images and videos. And Eventually, Google turned this into an ecosystem, which is now a powerhouse for small businesses. And the most interesting thing about Google Workspace is not so much that everyone in the world decided to move from Microsoft over to Google, although there were thousands and thousands of businesses who decided to make that switch. Google for many years were very far ahead of Microsoft and everyone decided to jump over. But it's the new businesses that start tend to choose Google more than Microsoft. Now, when I say new businesses that start, I mean micro businesses, businesses that are starting from absolutely nothing. And if you think about the typical profile of an entrepreneur these days, they're probably in the age bracket of Gen X or a millennial, and they're probably what we would consider a digital native, meaning that they've started their journey online in the cloud. They grew up with the internet. And so they have a strong desire for all of their tools to work seamlessly across devices, to be online and instantly available and instantly accessible at any time, and for them to have a strong level of consumer feel, I would say, to be as easy to use as something like signing into Facebook or snapping a photo on Snapchat. And then finally, being able to have integrations. We grew up in a world where if I wanted to sign into eBay, I could just click a button and sign in with my Facebook account. And so we want to be able to use our productivity suite for our identity as well. Now, that's what Google Workspace basically gives us. And by us, I mean, I'm a millennial business owner as well, right? It gives us the ability to use a business application that feels a little bit like a consumer application. So why do young people choose Google Workspace if they're starting a business? Well, it's because of all of these reasons. When we think, my generation, think of Microsoft, we think of corporate. We think of large business. We think of an IT guy who has to run it. We think of Outlook crashing when it's got too many emails. All those things are the baggage of Microsoft. And even though they're very much feature for feature, very, very rich ecosystems now, they're still quite different when it comes to the appeal for a younger, more tech savvy business owner. Let's talk about the features of the different platforms and where they've come to now. Now, if you asked me five years ago or 10 years ago, I would have said to you, Google's beating the pants of Microsoft. They were for many years, at least three years ahead on building out live collaboration and online features. And that's always been where Google have really shone. You could work on documents in real time together. Multiple people can be editing a document and see where each other's cursors are. You've got the infinite revision history, which lets you go back to any version of the document at any point in time and see a snapshot of exactly what that document looked like and even restore to that version of the document if you want. Meaning that you'll never lose your work if your computer crashes and your internet drops out or something else goes wrong. And we all know how much it hurts to be working on a Microsoft document for an hour or so, the auto save isn't enabled or it crashes and poof, the document's gone. Nobody likes that. So Google really pioneered that working online, working in real time and bringing that to the masses with Google Workspace. And bit by bit, Microsoft has caught up, but their online documents are still not really as powerful as the desktop versions. And so most people end up using the desktop versions rather than the online counterparts. The online counterparts do work, but collaborating on them is not quite as smooth as working with a Google document and people tend to default to using the desktop. Same, same with Microsoft Outlook. Most features are available in the browser, but not 
all of the features of Outlook are in the browser. They've done a pretty good job of porting pretty much everything there, but many people still default to using the local desktop. What does that mean? Okay, local desktop app, local desktop problems. It'll crash sometimes, it'll run slowly sometimes. If you're a business owner and you've got 10 years of data, the search is gonna run slowly. The local database and cache, we call it, of files, is gonna hold you back bit by bit. Now, I've got many Microsoft diehards who will say, Pete, you don't understand. It's more powerful. It works great. It saves all of your data on Microsoft Exchange and 365 in the cloud. And so, you know, your local computer is gonna run fast. But I can tell you, every time I touch a Microsoft product and I get a little spinning wheel of death of some sort or the app just crashes or I go to a, I mean, we don't get blue screens these days, but you know what I mean. There's little bugs that happen on a local desktop app that just don't exist when you are working in a Chrome browser and the app that you're using is a website on the internet, which is how it is with Google Docs, Google Drive, Gmail, Calendar, and everything else. Not to mention the ability for Google to roll out new features faster because they don't have lots and lots of different devices to support when they create their software. They only have to make it work in the browser and it's much simpler for their development team. So they're some of the fundamentals, but you might be thinking, well, Pete, what does that mean on a practical basis? How should I choose between these different ecosystems and these different apps? Now, feature for feature, these days, they're pretty much the same. Price for price, these days, they're pretty much the same per user. You're gonna get file storage, Google Drive with Google, you're gonna get OneDrive with Microsoft. You're gonna get the ability to create an online intranet, online storage of your business documentation. In Google, it's Google Sites. Admittedly, not as good as, SharePoint for Microsoft. You're gonna get email, feature for feature, pretty much the same. Outlook's got a few more buttons for a few things, but Gmail Outlook, pretty much the same. Calendar, I would also agree, pretty much the same. I like Google better because it has more integrations and it just seems to run faster than things on Outlook when you're connecting to sharing calendars with your teams and doing other things like trying to organize a meet between multiple people. It's got all kinds of clever scheduling features and I really like that. Chat, pretty much feature for feature. Google has Google Chat, Microsoft has Teams. Now, I have heard that Teams is just a little bit clunky sometimes, is maybe not as easy to use as Google Chat. What I really like about Google Chat is it's integrated with the rest of the Google ecosystem. So if someone's got a calendar event saying that they're out of office, Google Chat is automatically gonna tell me that. The little things where Google kind of has all its apps talk to each other work really nicely. And I don't quite know if Microsoft's got all of that down as well as Google does. The other thing that Google does really well is because you can easily message between a business account and someone who's on a personal Gmail account or share files between someone who's on a Google Workspace business account to someone who's using a personal consumer Gmail account, it means that the experience of Google to Google is pretty simple no matter what kind of files or documents you're working with. Working in the Microsoft world is a little bit different and admittedly, I don't use the ecosystem very much myself, but everyone's told me that yeah, Teams is okay, but Slack is much better for chat. And that means that many Microsoft users end up sticking with Slack instead of Teams for their chat. And then you're doubling up on subscriptions, you're doubling up on features, you've got more security to worry about, and you've got to worry about integrating those two potentially as well. I also hear from others that Microsoft's Teams meetings is not always as good as all the features you can get with Zoom. So many people still use Zoom. I've heard that OneDrive is slow and it starts getting buggy when you've got lots of files in there. So many people still use Dropbox or another solution. And you can see where I'm going with this. Most of Microsoft's products give you that full ecosystem with all of the features there. But for many people, they feel like it doesn't quite hit the mark in terms of the end user experience. And so they end up doubling up by purchasing additional software, which is gonna cost you extra licenses and just may not work so well with everything else that you've got going. Google, for the most part, when we see it rolled out in a business, is the only app that people use. People use Google Drive for everything. They'll use Google Docs for most things. They'll use Google Chat when they've watched our videos and they know how good Google Chat is. They, of course, use Gmail and Google Calendar, and they don't really need to double up on many subscriptions. It's pretty rare that we see someone still using Slack when they're using Google Workspace. Once they've been shown how to use Google Chat, how to configure a few chat rooms for your team, and how to set up your integration. So if something happens in an external app, you can have it send an alert or a notification into your Google Chat. Nice little feature there, and we love that. Make sure you check out all the videos on our channel, which let you know how to get started with Google Chat and our best practice recommendations for getting it implemented. So if you're a small business owner and you're deciding, well, which app do I wanna use? 
Feature for feature and price for price, it's probably gonna be pretty much the same. Unless you find yourself in the situation where in the Microsoft world, you start doubling up on subscriptions because there's things you wanna do that you don't like the Microsoft way of doing them. Now, if you're a mid-sized business or a large enterprise and you've got other apps that you need to have interact with the Microsoft ecosystem, well, okay, in that case, and I'm talking about businesses with 50, 100 employees and up, Sure, you might wanna to stick to the Microsoft ecosystem because it integrates better with other kit that you've got running in the business. Or you wanna use one of the more advanced features of the Microsoft tool set, like their project management apps or their Dynamics business intelligence and reporting applications. All valid reasons for going with Microsoft. On the Google side of things, it's usually pretty easy for anyone to get started with because these days, everyone's got a Gmail address. Particularly your younger staff are gonna find it easier to adopt Google Workspace than they would the Microsoft ecosystem if they're fresh out of university or high school because they're gonna to wanna to work with something that's familiar to them and they're already used to a highly collaborative way of working and Google Workspace fits perfectly for that. So I'm obviously pretty biased. I've been working with Google Workspace and recommending Google Workspace to business owners for over 15 years now. We love this ecosystem and we think for the most part for small and micro-sized businesses, it is the best solution for anyone who's considering Microsoft or Google. But hey, if you think I've got the wrong take here, let me know down in the comments. I'll gladly argue with you. <laughs> if you liked this video, we've got plenty more on the channel covering this topic and much, much more.